You're watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Welcome back. This week, the Anti-Defamation League released a new report called Hate in the Prairie State, Anti-Semitism and Extremism in Illinois. Joining us now is the Midwest Regional Director of the ADL, David Goldenberg. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So this report goes into very big details about the rise in anti-Semitic extremist events all across the state. And, and I wonder what, for this report in particular, obviously it focuses in on Illinois. How did you feel about these findings in particular? Because we've heard from Illinois specifically, this you know, leadership government here in the state is very outspoken against these kinds of events. Well, this is what we believe to be the most comprehensive assessment of extremism and anti-Semitism and hate that's been done in recent years, looking specifically at Illinois. And what we did was we went back and looked at different trends and data points and, and incidents uh, beginning in January of 2021 through May of earlier this year. And what you have in this report are a series of data points ranging anywhere from a significant increase in hate crimes and anti-Semitic incidents in white supremacist propaganda in the state, but also some larger trends that really underscore what we're dealing with here in the state. Why Illinois for this time? Is this a routine for the ADL that you go around, you find, you take a state at a time and, and now it's just Illinois' turn? Or what was the inspiration behind, behind doing this comprehensive of a look at Illinois? Yeah, Illinois is the sixth state that we've done a state-specific report on. And we did it for several reasons and why we chose Illinois before 44 other states. First, we have seen this steady uptick in incidents, whether it be anti-Semitism, whether it be anti-LGBTQ um, incidents, anti-Black racism, targeting the API community. We've seen that steady uptick. The second is there are some trends that seem to be a little bit more prevalent in Illinois, such as the targeting of women's health facilities include also the presence of extremists in some parts of law enforcement and first responders. But a big reason that we chose Illinois is because actually what you were talking about before, we have leadership at the state level, from the governor, the general assembly, to the attorney general, to the secretary of state, and also local units of government who frankly don't require a whole lot of convincing that we've got a problem on our hands. So it's our hope that from the information gleaned from this report and some of the policy recommendations that we've outlined, that we can turn Illinois into a model as to how we proactively and aggressively address a rise in extremism and hate in the state, but then also potentially throughout the country. You already mentioned the time frame that this report covers, and, and I wonder why specifically that time frame because we have obviously have had a lot of different elements contributing over the past it's slightly under 10 years where we've seen these kinds of events upticking significantly since then but when we're talking about things like anti-semitic events uh you meant uh aaip uh populations as well and it, I wonder what about now what about 2021 to 2022 that time period brought this report forward? Was it partly the pandemic? Was it partly the, you know, the d political discourse that we're seeing across the country now? Yeah. Well, so look, if you looked at trends over, let's say, the last 20 years, let's just look at hate crimes. We are at a 20-year high in the number of reported hate crimes in the United States. If you go back to 2001, when you had the September 11th attacks, we saw a dramatic spike in hate crimes directed largely toward members of the Muslim community following the 9-11 attacks. From there, it steadily went down until about 2015 and 2016, which is when we start seeing the numbers trending upwards. We have seen those numbers spike dramatically over the last five, six, seven years. And so while we had tracked, for example, 120 or so percent increase in the number of anti-Semitic incidents from 2021 to 2022 in Illinois. If we go back to 2016, it's actually been a 430 percent increase. And so when we looked at just the last two years, 
it's certainly a time when we're coming out of the pandemic in this sort of, shall we say, new normal, but also just the ability to look at kind of like the last 12 to 18 months uh, to show and frankly capitalize, not capitalize, excuse me, to show and uh, um, capture what the last 18 to 24 months have really looked like. If I can go into the methodology of the report a little bit, there's a lot of talk about events or you know protests, marches, things like that. What exactly qualified a a ping for you guys? What what qualified as an event, one that was worth considering in this particular report? So if you look back here on my screen here, it's ADL's heat map, and heat is an acronym for hate, extremism, anti-Semitism, and terrorism. And if your viewers go to ADL.org and look at our heat map, you can actually zoom in and see dots and circles that represent incidents that have occurred. The larger the circle, the greater number of incidents. And you can actually then look at the list of those incidents that occurred. Now, what we track in this report are incidents that we follow. These are incidents that are maybe necessarily don't rise to be an actually legally defined crime, but could be harassment, could be vandalism, could be an assault or even worse that we track here. So we're aware not only of things that land on the list of hate crimes, legally defined hate crimes, but instead we're actually tracking the bigger picture. When we look, yeah. I'm sorry, I only ask because within this time period here in Springfield, we there was a revelation that a Springfield police officer uh, had effectively been living a double life in this sense. They were they were out on the streets as a police officer for years and then online at home on social media accounts was posting Nazi propaganda and and a whole lot of other, uh, you know, hate, a whole lot of other anti-Semitic imagery. And it does. Is that something that qualifies as a part of this report? Or is it fair to say that, you know, the ADL's report as comprehensive as it is, is still not touching every corner of the state? Look, what I would say is first, that particular incident is actually highlighted in this report, um, because in that particular situation also, the department said, this isn't who we stand. This is not who we are. This is not what we stand for. And it's unacceptable. So in those situations, we think by highlighting the presence of extremists in law enforcement in the state or who have some ties to law enforcement, uh, we think it's important to, to shine a light on it. A couple of, about a year and a half ago, there was a leak report, a leak report, two years ago it was, um, a leaked roster of individuals who showed up on an Oath Keepers uh, membership roster. There were over 800 individuals who we could tie back to the state of Illinois in some form or fashion, which included three dozen law enforcement and first responders. And so in those situations, it's important that departments understand it. It's important that departments have zero tolerance policies for this. Um, and so in those situations, uh, we're able to sign of shine a light because we can gain access to the information. But to your other question of do we have everything? No, we don't. We know that hate crimes, for example, between 40, when it comes to hate crimes, for example, between 40 and 50% of hate, all hate crimes don't go reported to law enforcement. There is a lack of trust with law enforcement. Victims are concerned that they'll be targeted or the stigma that could go along with them. There are cultural reasons that they won't report. And so we know that these numbers are only the things that we actually know about. And one of the things that we hope that will come from this are new ways for people to report incidents, new ways for people to report hate crimes, uh, and a greater awareness uh, around the problem. Because we know, as you sit in the state capitol right now, we know that data drives decision making and the allocation of resources from a policy making perspective. And it's important to create a baseline and a greater level of understanding about the threat and the issues that we're facing in the state. We have a couple of weeks until veto session here in the Capitol, but then we also have, uh, you know, spring session starting up in January. Can you give a little bit, I know you just talked about it a little bit, but can you give a little bit of insight into what specific policies the ADL is going to be pursuing now that they, they have that data from this report? Absolutely. So we don't intend to be advocating for anything during veto session, but this past legislative session, we were advocating and champ helping champion an anti-doxing bill, which will ultimately pass unanimously in both the House and in the Senate and was signed into law by Governor Pritzker. 
Um, as we look ahead, there are some things like mandating law enforcement to take hate crimes training, about like mandating that law enforcement reports hate crimes that occur and they do a better job of tracking it. Those types of issues exist uh, right now that we can address in a real meaningful way. Additionally, when we think about protecting and preserving our democracy, for example, right now in Illinois, we don't prohibit firearms from being in polling in all polling locations. That's a big thing, especially as we think as to what occurred during this last election and actually the last two elections. Um, and, and so it's really important that we look at sort of, that we look at key activities within our democracy and make sure people can carry out those activities uh, with complete safety and feeling comfortable and not intimidated. So those are some things that we're looking toward as we look toward 2024. All right, well, David Goldenberg, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. When we come back, it's National Banned Book Week, and we sit down with somebody from the American Library Association to talk about what this week means and why it's so significant in Illinois this year. We'll be right back.